Hello, uh, well, good morning. I'll come back. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to teach you about laser rate equations. Here, you're going to understand about rate equation and that is applied to many systems. Basically, you have to study late to understand uh, rate equations for two level system, three level system, and four level system, which is very big. In this lecture, I'm going to cover only two level system. Therefore, this I'm calling it as a first part of the laser rate equation. Now, rate equation is one which describes the changes in population of energy levels of a lasing medium. Now, these are differential equations of first order. And this helps in determining steady state population differences and threshold condition for threshold pumping rate required to maintain a steady state population inversion. This allows the oscillations to build up in the cavity until a steady state is reached with gamma equals gamma threshold. So we have derived expression for threshold population inversion in the previous lecture. The medium will start lasing once the gain coefficient is greater than gamma th. So in this particular lecture, we are going to consider a simple system containing only two energy levels. Two level system. So two level means only there are only two energy levels. Let their energy levels be E1 and E2 having the populations N1 and N2. In any system, including this one, total number of particles is conserved. The total number of particles is, a, I am denoting it as N0, that's equal to N1 plus N2. N1 is number of atoms in the first level, N2 is number of atoms in the second level. Those are populations on the first and second level respectively. Now this, this shows the schematics of the system which we are going to interest at. E1, N1 is the energy level and uh, population of the first level and E2, N2 are the energy levels of energy levels and populations of the second level. The two dashed lines in black color showing upward direction and downward directions are the two transitions which are responsible for the two level system. There is also one more kind of transition which is which are familiar process in the lasing laser mechanism. A population inversion is a very important condition and lasing will take place only if there exists population inversion that is only if N2 is greater than N1. The minimum population required to just to initiate the lasing action is called threshold population inversion. I am denoting here it as N of TH which is the difference between N2 and N1. NSTH equals N2 minus N1. Equation 1 and equation 2 in this slide, you can add the two e equations. If you add the two equations, N1 will get cancelled on the right hand side and uh, you get 2N2 on the right hand side. Left hand side becomes N0 plus NTH, which can be simplified for N2 as that will be equal to N0 by 2 plus N0, N, 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 NTH by 2. This quantity NTH by 2 is actually a positive quantity which is more than 1. Therefore, the required condition is that N2 should be N2 should be more than N0 by 2 because NTH by 2 is more than 1, it's a positive quantity, the N2 should be more than N0 by 2 to have population inversion. So lasing in a two level system can be begun only when more than half of the total population is pumped up to the upper energy level, otherwise 
there is no lesing into an energy level system. So that's the initial information that one can understand from this. Then we will use a simple system in which we will consider only decay of atoms from an excited state. So here also I am going to discuss only two level system, uh, one ground state and another one is excited state. Let us assume that some large number of atoms are already in the excited state and when you turn off the uh, source, pumping source, which are sending atoms from ground state to excited state, what happens to the excited levels? They undergo decaying from higher level to lower level. This is called decay of atoms from an excited state. So for this, in the absence of any pumping force such as radiation field, one less spontaneous emission from EO2 to E1 is possible. Let A21 be the spontaneous transition probability from E2 to E1. Look at the uh, suffix 21. 21 actually in indicates as the transition from second level to first level and A21 is spontaneous transition probability notation. Then rate of change of number of atoms N2 in the excited state depends on two quantities number of atoms in the second state that's the population of the second state N2 and it also depends on spontaneous transition probability. So then we can write it as dN2 by dt as equal to minus A21N2. Here a negative sign in this equation minus A21N2 refers decrease of number of particles from the excited state because of this spontaneous emission, spontaneous decay process. Now simplifying this particular equation you get ln n2 equals minus a21t plus c where c is an integration constant. Now further simplification of the equation will give you n2 equals exponential of minus a21 plus c where the integration can, constant can be solved by knowing the initial conditions. Let initially the number of atoms in the excited state be n2 prime, then equation above equation can be written as this by this expression n2 prime equals a equals e power x uh, minus a21 times 0 plus c 0 because in t at when t is 0 n2 becomes n2 prime. So that gives you n2 prime as equal to ac. When you substitute that in this equation, you get this particular equation. That's equal to n2 is n2 prime exponential of minus a21 by t. Now this equation can be written as n2 prime exponential of minus t by tau, where tau is defined as 1 by a21 which is actually lifetime of the excited state e2 for the transition to e1. Remember that expression for lifetime which is reciprocal of transition probability of a spontaneous decay. Now let us consider the rate of equation, rate equations in two level system. Now in this case there are three competing process are possible. All these three processes are familiar to you. First one is induced absorption, second one is spontaneous emission, third one is stimulated emission. Absorption and stimulation emission requires the presence of external source of radiation whereas spontaneous emission requires the atoms to be in the excited state. If there is no, if there are no atoms in the excited state then there is no emission also. So let uh, rho of nu be the energy density of radiation of frequency nu and g of nu be the line shape function of radiation. 
the line shape function g of nu you are going to understand that in the one of your next classes few of after few classes it can be lorentzian shape or gaussian shape basically the two product of rho nu and g nu decides the quality of the radiation field applied on the phasing system so the number of atoms available in the system for each of these forces needs to be estimated we are going to discuss this one after the another first let us consider the absorption process now in the absorption process number of atoms which are getting absorbed after when it is exposed to radiation per unit volume per unit time depends on three factors the first one is the population in the ground level level 1 second one is the radiation field rho nu g nu and the third one is transition probability b12 from e12 to e2 uh, note this fact uh, suffix 1 2 here uh, of under b 1 uh, 2 refers transition from 1 to 2 for absorption process that is particles are going from level 1 to level 2 so then it reserves number of atoms in the ground level to be equal to b12 rho nu g nu n1 or this can be written as n absorption equals w12 n2 where w12 is simply the product of b12 rho nu g nu a simple notation given to those that product look at this arrow mark here this arrow mark shows the upward transition for absorption process next is stimulated emission for stimulated emission similarly we can find out number of atoms undergoing stimulated emission from e2 to e1 per unit volume per unit time and again it depends on three forces population in the excited level radiation density and transition probability b21 from e2 to e1 combining all these three nst stimulated emission and population is given by that expression that can be written in simple form as nst equals w21 n2 w where w21 is b21 rho nu g nu a simple notation for the product this transition is actually a downward transition which is shown here as a down arrow then third process is spontaneous emission which is discussed here spontaneous emission in order to have spontaneous emission atoms must be in the excited state so the spontaneous emission competes with stimulated emission because number of atoms in the excited state also undergoes stimulated emission and also it undergo spontaneous emission those two are denoted by s21 a21 spontaneous emission can be both radioactive radiative and non radiative types so number of atoms undergoing spontaneous emission is then given by a simple expression like this nsp t21 into n2 this is also downward transition where t21 equals a21 plus s21 sum of those two values the term a21 decide uh, defines inverse of the lifetime of the level e2 to e1 transition now we are now in a position to write rate equation rate a uh, rate of change of population n2 of level a is we can be written in this manner dn2 by dt is a rate equation rate of change of population when these two are written down that forms a rate equation so right on the right hand side we are actually using the also quantities with positive signs for those things which increases the population of the n2 and the quantities with negative sign are actually Uh, the quant number that the processes which decreases the number of particles in the n2 level so rate equation becomes such a simple form and that can be written in this form in equation 7 that 
where W even 2 is common or taken common out because stimulation emission probability is equal to induced absorption probability. So instead of W12, W212 different symbol, this is combined into one symbol W12 here in the equation 7. Exactly on similar lines, it can be shown that the rate of change of population N1 of level E1 to be in this exactly on similar lines, it to be equal to dn1 by dt equals minus omega 1 2 times n1 n2 plus t2 1 n2. So negative sign here actually shows that number decreases in the energy level n1. So the steady state condition requires that uh, left hand side of equation 7 and equation 8 should be equal to 0. That means there is no change in number either of level n1 or level n2. That is the steady state condition. Now then you, you can use that steady state condition either in 7 or 8 to solve for the condition for lasing action. So if we, if we use equation 7 then w12 into n1 minus n2 minus t1 t21 n2 equals 0. So that can be simplified by sending some of the quantities to the right hand side. So that will become w12 n1 equals w12 plus t21 times n2. Now that equation can be solved for the ratio of two population n2 by n1 which is equal to w12 divided by w12 plus w21. So if you look at the right hand side of equation 9, denominator is sum of two quantities w12 plus w21 whereas numerator is only one quantity w12 and w212 is common in both numerator and denominator. This implies denominator is more than numerator. So if that is the case, then left hand side it becomes n2 to be less than n1. So always n2 to be, be less than n1. That's the condition that we get, which is not the population inversion condition. Now, however, if we increase the intensity of the radiation field, then W12 will increase us. And if you increase further, N2 can approach the value of N0 by 2 at maximum value, okay, which is the best value that can be achieved. So N2 can never be more than N0 by 2. That's the limitation of two level system. It says it is impossible to attain a steady state population inversion by optical pumping in a two-level system. In other words, lasing is impossible in a two-level system. So if anyone wants to build a laser, then he must choose a system which contains more than two level. If the system contains only two levels, then it is impossible to achieve lasing action in the, the system. Okay, so that's the thing and that tends the lecture. Thank you for your kind attention and patience hearing. So we are going to learn about laser rate equation of two, three levels and four levels in the next class. For any clarification, contact